Hey, my Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. Cup of sunshine and the back says, wake up and be awesome. Look where I am. This chair I usually sit in has stuff in it. I decided to be lazy and just sit over here so you can't see the stained glass windows, but I'm in my friend's office. I have something I have to do here later and I thought, you know what, let's record Coffee with Brenna. Hopefully it's not too echoey, and I know the lighting's a little weird, but that's okay. I'm excited to be here with you today. You know, almost every week I think, oh, I have this short message to share with folks today, and then I usually do it in pieces, and I put it all together to edit it, and it's like 21 minutes long. Now, I haven't had a video that long in a long time, because I usually cut parts out, I stop and I look something up, or whatever the case may be. But today might actually be on the shorter side. I think I've only done under 10 minutes, like twice, maybe. <laughs> Whatever. So I've been thinking about a lot of different things lately. I got into a discussion with some friends today about the new documentary that's out, Shiny Happy People. I'm not going to link it or anything. If you haven't heard about it, that's okay. I haven't watched it. This isn't actually a commentary on the documentary series itself. It's more like I was talking about this woman on Instagram that I followed for a long time, and we've actually emailed and stuff, so, and she's been talking about it because that's how she was raised, and one of my friends was like, people like to make documentaries and movies and talk about what they're against. He didn't, he didn't phrase it like that. But we can see around us, and I'm sure in your life, you feel like certain things are against you, working against you, speaking against you, whatever the case may be. And as I was driving here, thinking about this, I thought, you know what? Maybe what we need to be reminded of is who is for us. Last week, we talked about Ahithophel and who... Are you listening to? I've done other videos about who's got your back. I've done other videos about how it's great to have people around you who are encouraging you and supporting you. But you want to know what we really primarily need to remember about who is for us? God is for us. God is on our side. And I just did a quick, I thought of a particular scripture, which I'm going to read at the end because that's the one I thought of all by myself. But I did a little Bible search for scriptures about this topic. Here's a few. Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm 124. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say. So when you're, you have to remember that Psalms were often sung. Okay. I think they were all made to be sung, but. A lot of them are like, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. They are meant to be sung. Sometimes we still sing the, those lines in church. But it says, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, meaning say it with me, sing it again. <laughs> had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the waters would have flooded over us. The stream would have swept over our souls. Then the raging waters would have swept over our souls. That's verses 1 to 5. So in these first two situations I mentioned, people are mentioned too. God is on my side. God is for me. What can man do? If God hadn't been on our side when these people rose up against me, these horrible things would have happened. What else does the Bible say about God being for us? Psalm 56, verses 8 to 12. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. This I know. God is on my side. So what is the psalmist's response after this? It goes on to say, I praise God. For what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I will fulfill my vows to you, O God, and will 
offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. <laughs> even when people are against us, even when circumstances appear to be against us, even when life seems to be against us, God, who collects our tears in a bottle, when we call to him for help, our enemies will retreat and we will know God is on our side. And the last verse that I thought of, which was the first verse that I thought of, which made me think about this in the first place, is from Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. What then shall we say in response to these things? Now, this comes in a very interesting chapter in the book of Romans, chapter 8. Now, chapter 7 in the book of Romans, you might be familiar or you might not be, either is okay, talks about how I do what I don't want to do and Who's going to free me from this, from this cycle? It doesn't say cycle, but that's what I think of. It says, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? This is the end of Romans 7. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then it goes into, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And it continues to talk along these lines for a while. It talks about suffering. One of my favorite verses about suffering I don't, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. That's Romans 8, verse 18. But right before the part I just read, it's talking about all this stuff like God works all things together for the good of those who love him. And so it's gone on and on about all these things. You can go read Romans 8. So then it says, what then shall we say in response to all these things? How can we respond? This is how we can respond. If God is for us, who can be against us? He, meaning God, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So if you're in a season where you feel like so much is working against you, whatever that looks like, be encouraged today, no matter what you're facing, truly. And I don't say this tritely because I know I've, if I could tell you some of the things I hear on a regular basis from people, the things they are coming up against, I'll give you the vague version. I spoke with a woman today who her job was not illegal, but it was not something God would want her to do. She was making a lot of money doing it. She became a believer, or probably better to say she recommitted her life to Christ, and now she's homeless with three children. I spoke to another person who has no food in their cabinets. And if you talk to someone who has no food in their cabinets, jump on Instacart, people. <laughs> that is the appropriate response. Send them a grocery card. But beyond that, I, I've, there's never been a time when I've had one empty cabinet, forget about all my cabinets empty, and she needs to eat a special diet, so some of the food she had was not available to her. So I'm not saying tritely, hey, God is for you, let's have a pep rally. <laughs> I'm saying, if we can't see the goodness of God, if we can't see God's presence in the midst of it, then we need to pause, and I would say repent, because if God is for you, who can be against you? And when... After you've listened to this, when you start feeling discouraged, remind your soul, remind your heart, remind your spirit, whatever. I don't know. You know, I'm not like a real theologian. I'm just someone who reads the Bible a lot. <laughs> so I don't always know like the technical term for things. But whatever. Remind your heart that God is for you. God is for you. Let's pray. Jesus Father God, thank you for being for us. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being kind to us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for collecting our tears in a bottle during those times when things are so overwhelming, but still being on our side in the midst of it. We thank you. Remind us, help us to remind ourselves to speak truth to our discouragement that you are for us and to stand on that promise like I talked about a few weeks ago.
that your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. And we stand on that truth today alongside the truth that you are for us. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. I would love to hear from you as always. And until next time, thanks again for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.